Hello students. Today we are going to do the poem, A Tiger in the Zoo, written by Leslie Norris. George Leslie Norris was a prize-winning Welsh poet and a short story writer. He taught at academic institutions in Britain and the United States, including Brigham Young University. Norris is considered one of the most important Welsh writers of the post-war period, and his literary publications have won many prizes like the Catherine Mansfield Memorial Award, the AML Award for Poetry in 1996, and the Welsh Arts Council Senior Fiction Award. In this poem, the poet tries to depict the mental condition of a caged tiger. He compares the life of a tiger in the zoo with its life in its natural habitat. Let's start the poem. He starts in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet range. So the poet here has shown the picture of a tiger who is behind the bars. So here starts mean striding to move quietly and slowly in a threatening way. Vivid means quite bright or clear. And stripes mean that you can see on his body, there's a black stripes. So these are the long narrow bands. And the pads mean the foot sole. And rage here means anger. The poet sees a tiger locked in a concrete cell in the zoo. It is a very small cage. The tiger can hardly take a few steps along the length of the cage. It looks majestic as he slowly moves up and down the cage. The sharp and clear stripes on his body are of strong bright color. His pads are velvet soft, means foot sole is quite soft like a velvet cloth. So in spite of all his strength, he now lies imprisoned behind the bars. The caged tiger is angry. He's full of anger, he's full of rage, but is quiet because he knows that he is helpless here. Let's find out the literary devices here. First of all, the tiger is personified because the poet refers him as he. So personification is here and his foot sole is compared to the velvet cloth. So it is here metaphor and two opposite words are put together here. So quiet rage, he's angry but quiet. So this is here oxymoron and the, let's find out the rhyme scheme here. Stripes is not rhyming with anyone. So we'll give it the rhyme scheme here. We'll give the letter A. Cage is rhyming with rage, so letter B for cage and letter B for rage. And quiet is an, again another sound, so it is C here. So prime scheme of this stanza is A, B, C, B. He's lurking in the shadow, sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass. Lurking in shadow. Lurking means hiding, hiding in shadow. And sliding, sliding through long grass means moving like a, we take a slide. So he's slowly moving through long grass near the water hole. Hole means here pool of water where the plump deer pass. Plump means very fat and chubby deer. So looking at the imprisoned tiger, the poet is filled with pity. He says that the poor tiger should have been in his natural habitat, that is the jungle, hunting and resting there. Then at this hour of night, he would have been lying in the shadows of trees and sliding quietly through the long grass. He would then near the water hole, wait for some fat and healthy deer to pass that way. Thus, he would be lying there in expectation of a heavy feast. But here in the zoo, he is behind the bars. But the scene would have been different if he had been in his natural habitat. Let's find out the rhyme scheme here. Rhyme scheme, shadow is not rhyming with anyone. A, grass with pass, B, and hole is another word. So C, A, B, C, B is a rhyme scheme of this stanza. And as you can see that sliding through the grass, long grass near the water hole where the plump deer pass. This line starts from here and it ends here. So line continues to the next line without punctuation marks. It is known as enjabment. And here you can find out another plump, plump pass. PP sound is alliteration and imagery lurking in shadow, lurking, hiding in shadow. So you can imagine this picture in your mind. So it is here imagery. He should be snarling around houses. 
at the jungle's edge, barring, bearing his white fangs, his claws terrorizing the village. Snarling, snarling means here to make angry and warning sound. Bearing, bearing his ear means showing, showing his fangs. Fangs means these two long teeth. Fangs, showing his fangs and terrorizing. Terrorizing means frightening or threatening the villagers. So in these lines, the poet imagines that the tiger would be doing in case he failed to find any prey in his natural habitat. What would be the tiger doing if he's unable to find the prey there in his natural habitat? He says that the tiger would be angrily moving around the houses in a nearby village. He would be growling at the edge of the jungle near some village. He would be showing his white fangs. He would be showing his white fangs and terrible claws while moving here and there. It would thus, he would become a cause of terror for the villagers, terrorizing the villagers. He would become a cause of terror for the villagers. So the poet here gives a hint that if we continue to destroy the forest cover and the natural habitat of the tigers, they will be forced to turn to our towns and villages to find their food. <coughs> The students, let's find out the literary devices in this stanza. So here again, he should be, he should be up to edge. Line from starts from here, it stopped here. So this is enjambment and onomatopoeia words like snarling. Snarling is a sound word, snarling. Snarling means here angry growling sound. So this is here onomatopoeia. And assonance is there in the word like should around houses should around houses it is here vowel sound o and i in bearing his white fan so this is assonance when vowel sound is repeated in between the words it is known as assonance and now another sound is here consonance consonance means his fangs his claws his fangs here s sound s sound is repeated here so this is here consonant so what is the rhyme scheme here? Rhyme scheme here, houses, rhymes with no word, and edge and village. So here rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. But he's locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. Here concrete cell means a very small, unpleasant cage made of bricks, cement, sand, and water. His strength, his power is behind the bars, these bars. And he's stalking the length of his cage. Stalking, I told you earlier, also moving slowly and quietly in a threatening way. So the poet sees the tiger locked in a concrete cell in the zoo. In spite of all his strength, he now lies imprisoned behind the bars. Very slowly and silently, the tiger moves up and down along the length of his cage. He moves in an angry and threatening manner. He takes no note of the visitors. He, pay, he pays no attention on the visitor who had come to the zoo to have a look at him. He completely ignores them as none of them thinks of releasing him from his prison. Moreover, Due to their presence, he hardly gets any rest during the day. Let's find out the literary devices here. Again, his strength, his cage, he is logged. It is personification. And as soon as logged concrete cell. Here E sound is repeated. As soon as and consonant strength. His strength bars. So here. It is consonant, S sound, and alliteration behind bars. Behind bar, BB sound is a bit. This is alliteration. The rhyme scheme is here, A, B, C, B. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Patrolling means, patrolling means to go around an area at regular times to check that it is safe. Like police patrolling, 
so brilliant means very bright he hears the last voice at night so due to the visitors the tiger gets no rest during the day even at night he remains disturbed due to the noise that comes from the patrolling cars the tiger has thus lost all hope and feels very helpless he thus stares at the brilliant stars shining brightly in the sky why he why is he staring at the stars he is nostalgic nostalgic means missing his old golden days when he was in the forest in his natural habitat so he is nostalgic about his old days when he was roaming freely in the jungle but now he longs for that freedom he desires for that freedom it seems that he is looking for some sort of comfort and hope in these stars his brilliant eyes show that he will, he still hopes for the day when he would be able to run free in the forest let's find out the literary device here enjambment is here again and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars so this is here enjambment alliteration is there he hears h s sound he hears this is alliteration and brilliant eyes brilliant star word brilliant is repeated so this is here repetition and the rhyme scheme of the stanza is a b c b what's the central idea of the poem lesley norris compares the life of a tiger in the zoo with its life in its natural habitat the poet conveys an important message that the wild animals should be in their natural habitat in the poem he highlights the contrast between freedom and captivity he believes that all animals will be happy only in their natural habitat thank you student i hope all of you have understood it very well thank you